Hey, J Birds, we have the merchandise available now. The hoodies, the female shirts we have available. We have the male shirts available too. And then we also have, bam, the mugs, right, for everybody. So hit the description box below. Peace. Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. And this is my review for Married to Medicine Season 6, Episode 5. I have not, I didn't do any reviews this weekend. I have not been on YouTube since I did my live on Friday. I was on live for 2 hours and 40 minutes and the bitch was tired, okay? And then Saturday, I was just not, I was just all out of it. Oh, but it is Sunday, so I have about five reviews I'm going to have up today that you got to probably see, you know, in between tonight and then to, in mor uh, Monday morning. But I love you guys for like who the people who follow me on Instagram. I posted on there how I was not feeling good. I was supposed to go to Carla's show, and I just couldn't, I couldn't, like, I was, I don't, I wasn't safe to drive, okay? I just was not a whole out of body experience or whatever. But. I am back today, okay? I am back. I am better. I am rested. Okay, things are, you know, I'm, I'm feeling better. So, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel um, and become a J-Bird. J-Bird. Hey, J-Birds. So, that just means that you are part of our flock, okay? And do not forget to be an active J-Bird, which means comment here and there, like the video, share the video, okay, 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 and do not forget to also hit that notification bell because it lets you know when I have new videos up. So, Mary T. Madison, I feel like today's episode was a filler a little bit. Um, I feel like a lot of nothing happened. Like, yeah, a, lo a lot of nothing happened. Like, I don't a lot of, a lot of tidbit stuff. I was like, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, we see the episode started off with Mariah taking her 13 year old daughter to see her to see Dr. Simone. I would rather go see Dr. Jackie <laughs> for my child. However, you know, okay, I get it. So she was basically taking her her daughter is 13. She's about to start high school. And she just wanted to take her to kind of just get her used to going to see a doctor. I do not think she had an actual appointment, like, you know, to be seen for anything. But I like how it seems like Mariah was getting her prepared. You know what I'm saying? She brought up how when she first went to the doctor when she was younger, how her first, you know, pap smear situation was a man with big fingers. Okay, so she's like, that was a whole bad thing. And I don't think enough people talk about, um, especially when you have daughters, uh, that first, you know, pap smear appointment, those kind of things. I like how Mariah took her in there and when they, was waiting for, while they were waiting for Dr. Simone to come in, she got up on a little table, she pulled the stirrups out, like, got in position, like, she showed her the first time that you go in to have a pass mirror, this is what's going to happen, they're going, you know, and I like how she explained it to her, I think back in the day, because she said, like, her mama probably did not do that, and I think it's because you, I think back in the day, you just didn't think about it, I can't remember if my mom, like, had that whole conversation with me, explaining it, but I don't recall me having a bad experience when I went and had my first one done, I can say that. Um, so I, you know, I, I was prepared as much as I could be prepared. Um, so I like that, you know, even when Dr. Simone came in, even though we didn't see her talk to her about much stuff, and I'm pretty sure that's because of HIPAA, you know, you cannot, sometimes you don't show, you know, too much detailed conversations that's about medical stuff. So the part that we saw, which is her telling her, like, you know what I'm saying, talk to your mama, okay, you know. But she, she asked, like, you know, do you have a phone? Like, do you send pictures to people or whatever? Just asking her questions, like, you know, because you send them pictures, like, about your body. What's going on with that? And she was like, no, I don't do that. So, it was a it was a pretty innocent appointment that, you know, it was basically that. You know, we then see Kwa who go to see, we see Dr. Jackie who has Kwa come to see her. And Kwa ragging, you know, Jackie don't cook. Cause Jackie's like, oh, I cook this food for you. Or, no, I have this food for you or whatever. Um, here, Jackie don't cook. Jackie don't do that. Okay. 
look, if a person doesn't par partially cook, but they can order some good food that tastes delicious, bitch, it's still something, okay? Because I don't cook all the time either. I cook sometimes, but I be so busy. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll, you know what I'm saying, grab a bottle of water and some watermelon. I'll grab some beef and barley soup, you know what I'm saying? I'll grab you know, some, some good salmon, some good <laughs> black and salmon, you know what I'm saying? You grab little stuff from places, okay, bitch? It's still nutritious and delicious, so get off Jackie's back, Quad. Um, so they're talking or whatever. She asked Quad, you know what I'm saying? How you doing, Quad? And Quad, like, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, it's, you know what I'm going here and there, whatever. Um, she brings up how she does not want to burden people with her issues. She does not want to lean on other people. She's used to not leaning on other people. Um, I love this vest, y'all. I can't wait to show y'all. Uh, well, if you don't, if you follow me on Instagram, you already saw it. But when I do my little looks of the day on Insta on on YouTube, I can't wait. I love it. Uh, anyway, it's a, cause it's long. Okay, it's a whole little long thing. Anyway, I got you know just look at the little buttons. Um, girl, focus. So again, she does not like to lean on people or you know what I'm saying burden people. And Jackie explained to her like you're not burdening us and you're not leaning on us. It's more of us helping you and like just us um holding your hand the same way y'all did for me last year when I went through my stuff. And I feel like in one way or another everyone has to handle their own situations their own way. I completely get that. You know, some people are not as open and honest or this is open in general when they are going through things and that's perfectly okay. I think the issue that I have with Quad is you're on a whole you're on a whole reality show about being married to Madison and you kinda sorta are not talking about the issues to the medicine man you married to. I'm saying I feel like um if you didn't want to discuss because like, again I tell y'all all the time Married to Medicine is one of the realest reality shows out there. I feel like they are the most authentic show that shows what's going on. Uh, you know, tax top ta tax, Lord Jesus. Toya and Eugene in a tax situation, you know, uh, Doctor Simone and Cecil they they issues, you know, Doctor Jackie and um what was his name? Why can't I think of Dr. Jackie, Jackie uh, what's her husband's name? It's not Eugene. What's her damn husband's name? Dr. Jackie and that man. What I can't think I cannot think what his name is. Anyway, <laughs> Curtis, Lord Jesus, Curtis. You know, Dr. Jackie and Curtis uh situation. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they all have in one way or the other shown what was going on. Even when they said Lisa Nicole and them on there, you know, we saw the whole craziness of all of that. You know, so I feel like for me, for Quad to be going through things, but she's not really um, showing it on the show, I'm like, you know, that's kind of not fair. If that's the case, do like, remember that white woman in season one who went away? Do like her and take a season off. You know what I'm saying? Just go away. If you're not going, you know what I'm saying, really be open to the open to the show, then just you know take a season off. I f but I don't I don't like how Quad is on here and she's so closed off. I don't. I feel like it's unfair to the people who have had to put their business out on Front Street. Anyway, um, she brings up how for her. You know, when he admitted what happened a little bit at the beginning of last year, and then they had the whole article that came out where the girl was talking again. Okay, the girl said, the girl, the whole little heifer said, you know, what I'm the whole little harlot said how, you know, he gave her head, how she gave him head, you know, the whole interview that she did in the paper. Um, it made her angry, more angry than she thought she would be when she kind of heard the details. And she has every right to feel like that, but I feel like people still think. That quad don't really want to be with Dr. G. And for her, it's almost a relief. It's almost a, I got a way out. I just have to play it the right way. I don't feel like she wants to be with Dr. G. I feel like even if he did not have this indiscretion, which you still should not have, even if, because you're married. You know what I'm saying? You're married, so you should not have those things. Uh, but I feel like even if he had not done that, Quad in some way, shape, or form would have still felt, you know, made it to be to where they would eventually get divorced. And the reason I said it is because last season she won a divorce and she kept saying, Oh, because he won't take the trash out, he won't show me that he loves me, he's not showing me, you know, all these things. And I'm looking like, Girl, so you was kind of like lying all last season, or at least making some shit up. So, yeah, I feel like she just needs to kind of be more authentic about what's really going on. So, as they're sitting there, Greg is calling her. And Jackie, like, he's calling, like, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to answer the phone. And she's like, he's trying to wonder, he's just trying to figure out where I am. And he called again. And so she then answered. But when Quad answered, Quad had a whole full fledged 
attitude, which she is entitled to because, again, her husband cheated in some way, shape, or form. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's just trying to wonder where he is. He's wondering where my wife is. I'm wondering, you know, why you're not come home at night or whatever. And she brings up, I was I was working. Okay, I, it's, it's whatever. Um, but, again, she he doesn't seem angry talking to her, but you can you can feel the anger in her talking to him. And again, she has every right to feel that way because her husband cheated. Jackie's like, you know what I'm saying? You know, he's calling you so clearly there's something that he's trying to fix or trying to work through. And then she was like, um, but that's because he know I'm his you know, I'm about to file for divorce. He's upset. You know, so I'm about to I'm about to change our whole life. Okay, girl, you say so. And Jackie got Jackie kinda just looked shocked seeing her how she talked to him. Um I guess it's, this is seeing in person. Not like, how dare she? It wasn't that. It was like, wow, like they really going through it. Okay, it is what it is. You know, and Kwai saying, you know, she cry, now she crying, you know, little one, two tears. Um, seeing how she, you know, she going to divorce him. He's just nervous. Of course, he's nervous because he don't know what she going to do. And Jack like, girl, it's going to be okay. And again, the way Kwai, Kwai played two different ways. And I feel like when you hurt and and you're embarrassed and you're humiliated and all these things, you do have a range of emotions. Um, I feel like if you want a divorce, get a divorce. Um, at this point, it just doesn't seem like y'all are going to make it work. Okay, I think y'all are in a worse position than CISO and Simone was when it was all your water town. You know, it's it's just weird. So anyway, that was the whole thing with them. We see Heavenly uh, talking to her son, her son's home, and we see her with her daughter to her daughter was like a rapping little song. I'm like, oh, little uh, uh, Laura, you know what I'm saying? She's growing up, you know what I'm saying, quick and fast or whatever. The son is home from college and come, come to visit, and you know what I'm saying? Heavenly wants to like, oh, you're going to bring your girlfriend's home for me to meet her. He's like, I ain't got no girlfriends, so I ain't, ain't got anybody on me. Ain't nobody there. And she feels like he's lying because he does not want her to meet whoever he's dating. She then said, you know what I'm saying, mainly because I can see through them hoes. I said, Heavenly, that's probably the reason right there. Because you call them hoes. Okay, you can't be out here calling other people's children hoes because they're fucking your son. Your son can be a hoe out here in these streets and fucking multiple people. So, you know what I'm saying, maybe your son is a hoe. Okay, maybe that's why you don't have a girlfriend. Because he's a whole whore out on these streets. But again... You can't be calling. You can't be wanting to meet people he messing with and calling them hoes. I can see through them hoes, girl. Bye. Then she gonna say how you know he likes pretty girls and you know pretty girls don't mean nothing. You say he need to get someone like his mama, not no pretty bitch. And then she realized I just insulted myself. <laughs> well, you did, bitch. All day, every day. Anyway. So, we then see her talking to Big Damon, you know, because her son is Damon, Damon Jr., little Damon, and then her, her husband, Daddy, you know, hey, Daddy. Um, and she talked to him just about how she wanted to go see her, the uh, anger management guy from last episode, and how he told her, you know, she has all these issues. Her anger stems from something from her childhood, from when she was living in Miami, and how she, why does this keep looking dumb? I think I keep moving around, so it keeps moving on my shirt. Anyway. But he tells her how, you know, her anger comes from something deep-rooted. And she needs to get to the roots of what her anger is. Because it's making her react to certain people. It's making her lash out at people. So the whole thing we talked about last episode is what she is now telling Damon. And Damon said, okay, I get it. You know what I'm saying? If you have to go home, that's fine. Um, to get to the root of your anger. She says it, it makes her recall when he went to, was it Barbados? When she surprised him to take him to the grave out of his father. How he kind of did not even know things that he was holding on to until he was there and he was able to release it so he's like i get that you have to like sometimes go to the roots or go to the place where something is and kind of let that shit go so um she's going back to miami she's taking dr jackie dr Simone with her um i'm happy it's not an all girls trip i feel like toya is just too much i feel like quad will be like in the corner crying about something that don't even matter. Um, I feel like her and Mariah will start beefing. And I feel like Contessa has enough going on. So why we know she's not going. Anyway, we see all the men get together. I like when the men get together. Because it just brings a whole different um, feeling to the show. And we don't see that enough on other shows. Where the men kind of get together. I think every season on here, there is some kind of men gathering Scene, so I I wish they would do more of that. Like, dude, like, don't just do one men gathering thing. Do like three. You know what I'm saying? Like, let the men, cause I'm like, they have to meet up and do whatever. Anyway, all the guys are there. We have Eugene, we have Curtis, we have C 
Cecil, we have Aiden, uh, we have Doc, um, Damon, who else? Greg Kane, uh, Scott Kane. So all the husbands were there, okay, all of them. And you know, when they sitting around talking and eating, eating and talking and drinking or whatever, with the little white Hennessy with some crab, with some little scallops. I want some scallops. I've never had scallops. Can somebody cook with some Cause I could have some scallops and something to me. I'm just saying. Anyway, you know, Greg asked Curtis, "Well, how you and Jackie doing?" He said, oh, "You know, we're doing okay. Um, we, you know, we're getting better." He like, "What's the secret?" Ha 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 ha. Because again, him and Quag went through whatever, and he just is like, you know, it's work. You know, it's a lot of. It takes time, work, and commitment. So it's a lot to it. There is no secret. It's you know, you have to just get through it. They did ask Greg, "Well, Greg." How are you doing? Okay, how are you things going with you? And he said, you know, for me, I feel like we're not a team. I feel like we, that we were not a team. And because we were not a team, I acted out and did stupid things. So what he meant was, all this time we've been acting like we was a whole little married couple, a whole little unit. That ain't what we is. And because we not, I was immature and did dumb shit. Like going out with my friends, hanging out with my friends, and get, meeting a whole girl. And taking her to a hotel. Um, he brings up how he, you know, because of the, that, he ended up in a bad situation. Okay. Anyway, you know, for the most part, we see all the couples and the confession was like saying how they feel about what he did and whatever. And for the most part, they all say, you know, you should, you should never step out on your, on your mate. I agree with that. However, I'm going to also be realistic, be realistic and say there's only... When you are not happy in your marriage, I feel like before you cheat, you should just leave. Okay? I feel like once you feel the urge to cheat, it's over. And you should leave. Okay? You should at least say, hey, we not vibing right now and we need to separate. And, you know, maybe we may date other people. Maybe we may not. But we not working right now. I don't want to do something that hurts you. Okay, because I'm feeling the urge to do things that may hurt you, but most people don't do that. Um, so I'm not saying that it was okay for Greg to do what Greg did. What I'm saying is, when you are in a marriage that you both both of you know is not working, someone's gonna get unhappy and someone's gonna cheat if you don't address it. So neither of them addressed it. Quad didn't address it. Neither did he. They just stayed unhappy until one of them went outside the marriage and now it's a bigger issue. But the main issue was was, was beginning to be what, what was already was we not working out. We, we, we not working out right now. But again, all the couples say, hey, this is not okay to step outside your marriage, blah, blah, blah. So they asked Greg, like, what would it take? What would it take for you and Quad to, you know, be back on the same page? And I liked what he said. I feel like what Greg said is what we have seen the past couple seasons. He said, you know what I'm saying, I, it would take for me to feel or for me to have faith that my wife desired me. And when he, I was like, that's a powerful statement. And I feel like it mirrors how Simone feels about Cecil. How Cecil does not make her feel... Like, he loves her. And she has this feeling of, um, you know, just like she just wants something more. So, I feel like he mirrors Simone. Which is so weird. The difference is Simone didn't go out and do shit. <laughs> Simone just stayed unhappy and stopped fucking her husband. Um, so, he brings up how, you know, when a person acts and believes that they are not compatible with you. It's hard to have faith that they, that they, that they desire you. Meaning... Why don't feel like, act like, treat me like um, that she wants me. And we have said that before. Quad don't act like she wants that man. She don't. She was there for her, whatever her reasons were. Money, uh, a platform. To, she was there for different reasons. And for a couple of seasons, it, didn't, it just did not seem like, like they were. You know what I'm saying? Like she was really into him the last two, three seasons. Okay? And that's just the truth. Anyway, you know, we see Cecil brings up how, you know, with him and Simone going through whatever, he has to realize that he could do more and his he could do more to save his marriage. And he like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know what I'm saying, even if he don't fix it, you need to try. And I'm like, I get that. They do need to try to fix it, but I, I also feel like quiet don't want to. 
I said this last season, Quad don't want to fix his marriage. And it's a thing of, did Quad do, this is what I'm going to ask people. And me, me asking this question, again, does not mean that he was okay for what he did. This is my question. If Quad was treating that man like she don't want to marry, like she don't want to be with him. Okay. And what could he do to fix that? If he's tried to fix it and she just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing him away. Like, put back, I want you, I want you, I want you, I want you, I don't want you, bruh. Okay. At what point should he stop being battered away? He shouldn't go cheat at all. But at what point is he like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to keep trying. I've been trying to fix shit. She won't let me. Because she don't want to be with me. You know what I'm saying? And I like how what Eugene then said. You know what I'm saying? Because again, Cecil and Cecil and Curtis, like, you know what I'm saying? Fight for, you know, stay in the fight for it or whatever. Whereas Eugene has said something that makes sense and that some people need to understand. He said, you know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, I wished my parents would divorce. Mainly because all they did was fight. All they did was fight, fuss, and argue all the time. And I kept saying to myself, why are they together? Like, why would y'all not, just, y'all are not happy? I wish my parents would get divorced. He said, you know, um, he said, it's a thing of when is enough enough? And, you know, how do you realize it's time to let go? Because all we doing is hurting each other. We're not even happy. And I feel like that's where some, I mean, that's where Quad and Greg, Greg is. That's where they are. They that may not be where Jackie and, and, and uh Cecil damn it, Jackie and Curtis was. It may not even be where Cecil and Simone is. But it could be where Greg and Quad ass is. Let that shit the fuck go. Okay, let that man go get a divorce, take a small penis, impregnate somebody, let Quad go, be quiet, put makeup on her face, and you know what I'm saying, girlfriend, all that stuff on Sister Circle. Let her be that. Let her go find a whole new husband or whatever. They don't know. Move the fuck on. Anyway, Toya and Eugene. I feel like like I was thirsty. I feel like Toya and Eugene may be making a smart decision here. Okay, they want to find their forever home. They were looking at other houses in Atlanta. Um, this house, that house, this house, that house. The, the only house we've seen them look at recently was one that was 2.9 million outside the little 2 million budget. So, they have met up with a realtor, their realtor and a developer. They have bought a land and they're going to build their dream home. And they bring up how they want to be doing that in Atlanta. They're going to do that in Alpharetta, Georgia. And Alpharetta is another city, you know, within Georgia. And they bring, they brought up how you get more bang for your buck in Alpharetta than you would in Atlanta um and you you can get like a house that's this small in Atlanta for two million dollars is this big in Alpharetta for you know what I'm saying it's, it's and that's how it is in other states it's not just in Georgia there are many you know even here in Michigan you can get a house that's small as hell for a thousand dollars rent or whatever but you can go out in a whole, another city you can get for a thousand bucks a month you getting a whole mansion it depends. Um, so yeah, and all cities and states have that where there are, are other cities that have you get a better bang for your buck. The question always is, are you willing to live in that city? Not all the time. Um, so they're gonna build a house in Alfred, Georgia. It's gonna be within their budget, supposedly, okay? It's going to be a nine thousand five hundred square foot house with six bedrooms, seven bathrooms. Toya's closet will be a two-level closet, and Eugene will have like a kitchen grilling area outside. Um, I don't want it to turn into a whole Chateau Charade situation, uh, where where they're building a house and then it takes forever to build. I also want them to be smart, okay? Because when Toya said, "I need a two, I need a two-level closet," I was like, "Bitch, why? Like, if your closet is the size of a room." To have two levels, you're going to keep buying stuff. And I can't talk because I've been shopping all the time. So, I, I, I get it. But at the same time, like, when they were talking about how much it would cost to do these extra things. Um, if it's going to be over your budget, you should not do that. And everyone, if, if you watch HGTV, you know how all these incidental, all these incidental, incidental situations <laughs> happen. And things cost more money. I think Sheree was going to build that house, okay? And the reason it took forever was because the contractors were horrible. So think of hopefully they got good contractors. Hopefully they don't 
go overboard. Okay, because I feel like if you get more bang for your buck in Alpharetta, that don't mean spend a whole two million. Okay, if you can get something good for like a million five, why not have a house that you paid to build for one point five and then pocket five hundred grand? Okay, and pay off, get some more weeds for Toya. You know, some buy some better shoes. You know I'm saying, get her a goddamn on business. Get Toya something that she can do to bring in more money. Anyway, that's what they had going on. Um, we see Simone and she's basically having dinner. We see that, you know, her son was on the phone with the other brother. Cool, cool, cool. He had college, you know what I'm saying? He had to have fun. Um, they then, Simone and Cecil, is talking about them kind of getting back into the group of being together. Cecil is now no longer employed. He got laid off. Plus that whole, that app thing he was talking about last season, that didn't go over well. They said the programmer for that went bankrupt, so that's on hold. So he, he wasted a whole 25 grand. So I know she's still pissed about that. Um, so he's like, now that he just like don't have a job to get up to and go up to every day, he has more free time, and so he can spend more time at the house with her. And Simone, like, I'm so used to being on my own, to chilling, to not have my own space, and not having to worry about, you know what I'm saying, anybody else. It's going to be a, an adjustment. I have to prepare myself to live with my family again. And I feel like that's what fucked them up in the first place. The minute Simone and Cecil lived in two separate houses, I'm like, at that point, it's, no, it's a wrap. You do have some people who, like me, I don't want to live with someone right now. <laughs> I, you know, I'm in that, I'm, cause I'm, you know, I, I do like my own place, but I'm not married. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have people who know I need to live separately from somebody, but I don't feel like you should do that when you're married. Like, if you are, if you married and you've been married for years and y'all been living together, if you start living apart, you're, it's, it's just separating. Okay? You're separating. So, you know, for her, she just in how, you know, she just has to kind of get back acclimated to um, having her family around. I'm like, girl, you got a whole husband and a whole kid, okay? Be there for them. And if he ain't, y'all waste some money having two goddamn houses. Because my thing is, if he no longer works, and I think it was because the kid's school was in one place, her job was somewhere else. But that boy, he don't know the, he can take himself to school his damn self. Put that boy in his own, no, you know, he only 15. Um, but yeah, I'm like, you know, they just need to kind of get it together. Girls, stop, stop playing. Um, Dr. Contessa. For Dr. Contessa, we see her go have the consultation for her breast, uh, she's having a double, uh, mastectomy. Which will lessen her chances of getting breast cancer, based on the stuff her her, her mom going through cancer, her dad going through cancer, and it was a qu quick little appointment. Or whatever she explained, medical jargon, it's you know, both breasts are being removed to lessen her chance of getting cancer. It's that simple. And she brings it out, you'll be down for about three four weeks healing, and you know what I'm saying after that you should be fine. Her husband's so dumb. He gonna say, "Can you tie her shoes when you're down there?" And she like, "I'm only from the neck up, you know, from the from the waist up. I'm not nothing but from the waist down." And she said, "Nah, if we if it's that if that's gonna happen, you have surgery. Not nah, I me. Mean, meaning my tooth don't won't be tied. Your balls will be clipped." Um. So we see that she later gets a call from the doctor who say like, "Hey, I have an opening tomorrow. We can kind of schedule your surgery tomorrow if you want." And at first she's nervous. She's crying. I don't, you know, it's so fun. And she said, "You know what?" book it just book it let's just do it and I feel like she wanted to put it off but she felt like that if she did that she may not do it later you know what I'm saying like she I think she felt like if I don't just say yes now I'll keep making up some kind of excuse or some kind of reason to um not have it done yet and I need to just kind of get it over with and so the surgery is, is not booked now the ending scene we see is basically Dr. Hadley and, and, and Simone and Dr. Jackie all go to Florida together and it's for her for Simone, for Heavenly to get her mind right figure out her issues what her, her triggers are um the scene for me wasn't that much for them going back it was, again it was a lot of filler stuff them on a plane them driving them checking in okay heavily being a little snappy bitch she is snap snap bitch bitch snap snap bitch bitch whatever uh typical heavenly um they're standing in two bedroom suite which i'm like why are y'all sharing rooms i when they said two bedroom suite i assume a two bedroom suite meant simone and 
Jackie would be in one suite and then maybe Heavenly had her own. I'm like, it was not in three bedroom nothings. Cause she said, well, I'm gonna share a bed with Simone. I'm like, bitch, I am grown. I'm not sharing a bed with other girls. No, I would never want to go on any trip and have to share a bed with somebody. Okay, I would. I mean, a bedroom, I get that. And it's two beds. Okay, I, I, I'll do that. But a, a bedroom, I mean, a bed, bitch, no thank you. Mm. Nope, don't want to do it. No space here. Um, anyway, so again, have we been snappy? Don't worry about the room, bitch. Uh, eat the food, bitch. Typical Heavenly, whatever. Um, I like how Jackie brought up to her, like, you know, you have a habit of snapping back at people. Kind of rude, and I feel like you do it based on something they said that triggers an insecurity from your past. And that is why you retaliate with nasty remarks, okay? And, you know, I just think that while you're here, this is something for you to look into as well. What did she then says, you know, you use your words as a weapon instead of using it to help people feel better. You do it to make them feel worse, which you, your, your words are a weapon. Heavily then says, well, I, I would, you know, you know, I don't respond back with, with retaliation. Um, it's the truth. What I say is the truth. And she then brings up how for her, my mom called me a bitch when I was all, young all the time. Like, she always called me a bitch. So that word means nothing to me because I was called that word my whole life. And my thing is, I don't get how as a grown adult woman how she could say that. Bitch, even, <laughs> even if you was called bitch your whole life, you as an adult woman can still know that word is offensive to some people. You can't call no random word per person a bitch. Like, I can say to my best friend, to my close close friend, bitch, please. Bitch, whatever. But I'm not gonna say to a person who I don't really fuck with like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna call them a bitch. Because if I do, them fighting words, okay? And I like, think if you don't know me, you can't call me no bitch. You can't. Because if you do, bitch, I'm gonna probably go off. Who is you calling a bitch? So, you know, I when she said like I, that word me, means nothing to me. Even if it means nothing for someone to call you a bitch, you can't then use that to other people because you you know it offends other people. Just because something does not offend you does not mean it does not offend other people. I'm saying so. I don't. I'm like girl bullshit heavily. But when she, I'm like, how, your mama called you a bitch. All I'm like, that's crazy. But it's like you see where heavily probably get. Heavily mama was probably worse than heavily. Okay, and so she's probably a tamed down version of her mama. But I feel like that whole little that whole little Kim persona is her mama. Okay, she got it from her damn mama, and that's what I say. Anyway, you know, um, Jackie said how she feels like with heavily being called by her mom a bitch, she's stuck into thinking everyone is a bitch too because she's a bitch, everybody else is a bitch. And it's not because I ain't no bitch, bitch. Okay, so she then said, Well, I would prefer Jackie that you call people bitches versus how you talk to people. You know what I'm saying? Because how you say stuff is kind of crazy now. And I like how Jackie said, so, Okay, so I said something to you that you did not like. So you not want to retaliate, deflect, and then put stuff on me. And I feel like she realized she did it. And was like, is it, is it you know what I'm saying, uh, rain on heavily day? It's like, no, but they're there to help you do stuff like this. They're there to help you say, stop pointing the finger, bitch, and start doing this. Stop doing this and start doing this heavenly. And that's why... Jackie brought that up to so you, so you can realize what you're here for, okay? Point blank to the period. And then she says, okay, fine, I'll be open to the process. And then it goes off. Again, that was the whole episode. So I feel like the meat, the meat and potatoes stuff will happen next week. Again, I think this was more of a filler episode. And that's fine, okay? Anyway, I'm going to end it here, people. Put your comments in the comment section, okay? Which is at the <laughs> what is below in the video and then also do not forget to um the description box underneath search damn it the description box under the video has my ig do not forget to follow me on ig if you want to know who sings the intro song that's down there my shirt hoodies and mug that are available on teespring the link is down there too so make sure to always hit the description box to see other stuff okay other than that i'm done Peace. It's like a love, love, love.